For this problem, we will be looking at two countries and their production of two products. As we solve this problem, we'll look at the comparative advantage between these two countries, the terms of trade as they choose to trade one good for another, and as they specialize in producing one product, how they gain from trade. So let's start off by looking at the comparative advantage between these two countries. The first step in solving this problem is to determine whether this is an output or an input question. As you can see here, the number represented in the table is the total number of steel, or the total number of televisions that these two nations produce. Therefore, this is what we call an output question. For an output question, we are going to take numbers from one column and place them over numbers from another column. We refer to this as the other goes over method. So for example, I will take my 3 and put it over the 6. Over here, I'll take the 6 and put it over the 3. 2 over 8 and 8 over 2. And effectively what this is going to help us do is to determine what we call the per unit opportunity cost. As each of these nations produce one steel or one TV within the table will represent the opportunity cost of production. So the next thing I need to do is to reduce down all of these fractions. 3 over 6 can be reduced down to 1 half. And what this represents is the opportunity cost in production of steel. So one steel for Japan costs them a half of a TV. Over here, one TV costs Japan two steel. Likewise, for South Korea, when they focus on steel production, their cost is one-fourth of a TV. And for South Korea, one TV costs them four steel. Now, I'm going to take this information and I'm going to plug it down here so it's easy to refer to. Again, for Japan, one steel costs them a half of a TV. One TV costs them two steel. For South Korea, one steel costs them one-fourth of a TV. And one TV costs them four steel. So, South Korea has a comparative advantage in the production of steel as the cost of TVs is less for them. Japan here has a comparative advantage in the production of televisions. We always want the country to produce the product for which they have less opportunity cost. Sometimes I recommend changing these to dollars. So instead of looking at this as two steel, I look at it as two dollars and this as four dollars. And again, we're looking at who can do it with less cost. Over here again, we would have 25 cents versus 50 cents. Who can do it with less cost? Now, a little trick that I like to use is to put these numbers on what I call a per unit opportunity cost PPF. So I'll take and bullet point one TV on the Y axis and on the X axis will be the cost. So one TV will cost Japan two steel. One TV will cost South Korea for steel. Now the rule of thumb here is that trade must occur between these two opportunity costs for this to make sense. So because we have a nice clean number of 2 and 4 as our opportunity cost, we'll take and use 3 as the term of trade. In other words, 1 TV must be traded for something in between 2 and 4. In this case, we'll take 3 steel. Now it could have been 2.25 steel or 3.75 steel, but 3 falls in between the two so it makes it nice and clean. The logic behind this is that Japan, when they focus on producing televisions and trade one, must gain profit. In their own country, when they take one TV and sacrifice it to make steel, they can make two steel. So in the trade, they have to receive more than they could have received on their own in their own country. Therefore, they must receive more than two. For South Korea, when they focus on steel production and they want a TV in their own country, it costs them four steel. So for them, this has to be a less costly endeavor. Therefore, they have to give up less than four. So again, for Japan, they have to get more than two. South Korea must give up less than four. This is known as the terms of trade. Now, the way that we can analyze the gains from trade is by looking at the total PPF for these countries in the production of steel and televisions. For this, I'll select Japan. When they produce all steel, they can produce six total steel or three total televisions or somewhere in between. Now in this example, Japan is going to produce all televisions because that's what they have a comparative advantage in, and they will export one of those televisions for three units of steel. Now, on their own, if Japan would have given up this one unit of television, along their PPF, they would have been right about here. So what that means is that with their own production domestically, to give up that one television, they would have been capable of producing two steel. Well now, as they trade, and based on the terms of trade, 
they are now trading one television for three steel. So this point indicates a scenario before trade, whereas this bullet point represents a scenario after trade. For Japan, their ability to trade one television for three steel puts them outside their PPF. Subsequently, this nets them a result of an additional steel that before trade they were incapable of producing. So the gains from trade here for Japan are one additional steel that they could not have done on their own.